Wrestling. I am going to have a tour today of University of West Florida in Pensacola, Florida with the amazing Jim. And he has been waiting with this amazing sports car. Sports car. We're going to go and have some golf later on. <laughs> this right, probably. Right. And this is the parking lot. It's a it's huge university. I did not realize that this, this city had this university. I mean, I'm like so dumb. I've been here for like forever. I just never came in. So there's my opportunity. Thank you, Jim, for the opportunity and giving us the, the VIP treatment and ride. <laughs> my pleasure. Thanks for coming out. And Jim had one of the uh, amazing classes, which is entrepreneurship related stuff. So tell us what you do, Jim. So I am the program manager <clears throat> for the Center for Entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And so we are a relatively young program, mm -hmm. uh, started with a very generous grant from Quint Studer, who's one oh. of our community leaders. Wow. And so our mission this semester is really our, it's our second kickoff. Oh. We had a soft launch last year. And then this year is So our you offer bachelor's or master's or, or just diploma or... So for the center, we primarily provide programming and uh, so for the students to get them engaged in this entrepreneurial mindset. Uh -huh. The university also provides uh, minor and entrepreneurial related courses. We have one in small business and fam family and small business nice. management, which is really an entrepreneurship course. It just doesn't reflect it in the name. Right. Oh, sorry, an entrepreneurship program. Right. And then we also have a certificate that we're developing on entrepreneurship. So, like, I was the first class to graduate with oh. a MBA. Uh -huh. Over a, here? Yeah, here with a focus on entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. Nice. So that's at the graduate level. And then there's, I think there's a certificate at the undergraduate level. So our programming is growing as the center is growing. And... So one of the really cool things we did um, was Quint Studer. Do you know Quint, by the way? Okay. I've heard his name like last week, first time. Okay. So is he co-taught a class out here wow. with one of our professors. So Quint Studer is a really great story because he is, you know, from the bootstraps up uh, entrepreneur that was working in special education and then went to work in a hospital, ended up becoming the CEOs of uh, a number of major hospitals, including Baptist here, and then formed a company to, uh, to do consulting for healthcare, hmm. and ended up, like within 10 years, selling it for 318 million. Wow. And now he invests a lot of that money into this community, trying to make Pensacola a stronger place to, to live, work, and do business is great for us so this is the athletic area now are y'all college age or going to college soon he's or? 12 and he's 17 and, and i 17? hope they don't join college but oh really <laughs> <laughs> see we're trying to change that perspective you know that <laughs> entrepreneurship can happen in a university okay but well, if I we're not trying to sell sell uh uwf courses you know you're not have a job then so we, <laughs> we better start selling but our, our our facilities here are just top notch so this is the athletic club on the right here right a lot of meeting space and right. uh, lots of, private lots of gym. sports people walking around yep private gym for the football team and the basketball team wow and then the uh student focused gym is here in this facility is i think three levels hmm so you'll be able if you want to go into anything just let me know and i'll stop okay but uh you want the fast tour but there's a nice entry level and classrooms on this level and then you go down a level and you're into a gym area and then on the upper level there's a walking track and uh, a full you know nautilus circuit type of a thing so you can peek in and see some of the human beings the human beings doing their thing in here but it's very it's well gym. equipped basketball yeah. racquetball and then on the right is the, the swimming pool. So right. I'm pretty sure it's Olympic size wow. uh, swimming pool inside. And again, if you guys want to see anything, just let me know and we'll stop. Can we as outsiders use the club? Um, not easily. Okay. So, so you can enroll me in as a professor and you know and get me in there and then 
then I can do this and I can enjoy what I do and at the same time use the swimming pool. So this is our new football program out here. So a year ago, I don't think we had a football program. Wow. It's very new, within the 18 months anyway. Wow. So Thank this, you, Studer. So this is not related to, <laughs> well, we probably invested some money in it, but okay. this is more of a broader thing where we actually started a football team and they've actually doing amazing. They've won a lot of their games. Wow. But like they built this field the other like a few months ago and then they're building this building as we speak which become the clubhouse. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's a whole another sports complex probably where you came in. Mm -hmm. You came in from Scenic Highway. I, mean, so, I wasn't looking at anything. I was just looking for the log K. Figure out where we were. <laughs> So yeah, you can see the back That's of the huge. pool here. So our sports programs are all pretty good. Uh, I'm, I've founded the racquetball club on campus. Oh wow! And had me to report that we were the only organization on campus to win a national championship last semester. Wow! Congratulations. So, uh, but we also have a great coach. So uh, that was my self promotion for the racquetball <laughs> program. Racquetball, everyone! If you haven't seen that movie of the racquetball, go and see it, and you know what it is. He's talking about. So, this is kind of the sports area. Nice. And only with Jim, you can, instead of walking, you can just, you know, take a buggy and go around all these places. Yeah, is it ironic <laughs> that we're talking about sports while we're <laughs> being driven around in a golf cart? And then over here, sorry, that's nothing. Our okay. NPR, our local public radio, oh, is wow. right there. Um, those things are always attached to a university campus, so. Um, ours happens to be that building right there, so. And then our tennis complex, we just kind of came through. And this way. So this is College of Education and Professional <laughs> Studies. Uh -huh. where uh, a lot of good programs, public administration, government, and uh, things like that. So, we have um, a professor that moved here recently from Michigan. He was on Obama's council for... Uh, either clean energy or sustainability or something like that hmm. is now here in Pensacola and so it's this amazing resource based out of the College of Education and Professional Studies. So student counseling service. Encourage everyone to go there every once in a while. Especially around finals when it's getting stressful. Mm -hmm. And then this is our art department. So bump. Sorry. <laughs> and if you want to go in, I'll show you the art gallery. Are y'all into art at all? Or? She is. She's an artist. Are you in? Not anymore? She's into food art now. So food she wants art. to create new kinds of foods and the science of food. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So she's our, she's our chef at home. I and love it. Yeah. The, um, one like of the most interesting entrepreneurial activities I've seen email you the information because it's not coming but they have a chemistry entrepreneurship thing going on and so the first project that came out of their incubator was this um, honey infused chocolate something or other that wow. looks so cool oh. and from what Did, was it tasty said, it was supposed to be tasty i didn't ever supposed to to be it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, that's um, something to be invented you know you invent a device you put it in your mouth and yes you can Taste the flavor over Facebook. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> you are an entrepreneur. <laughs> How Marcus is a local gentleman that uh, worked, I'm trying to think of what field he was in, but clearly engineering and became very successful and uh, donated to the school to make some of this possible. Computing. 
Oh, so this is your area of interest. Science. Gotcha. Science. Oh, you all can use some steps. Yeah, basically there's offices and classrooms on that wing. And then there's like open area, larger theater style classrooms on this side. We'll pop our head into one or two. Tutoring room in action there. Say to, to who? I was just saying who lives on this floor. Oh. Center for Cybersecurity. Hi. The office is up, I should say. This is um, one of our stronger areas is cybersecurity. Speaking of, hello, hello. Good, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Hi, hello. I hope you'll come back anytime and we can arrange meetings with her and. Is she the dean? Uh, she is the director of the Center for Cybersecurity. Um, clearly on a mission since she didn't stop. So. <laughs> pushes us to try to get more involved with this so next semester the College of Business is hosting what they call the elevator pitch I'll well, step back so the first thing we did this semester like week six was the da Vinci innovation celebration and this is a idea pitching contest where we invited students to come up with an idea that could be a new value right new innovation so no business model or anything just like what's your idea and come out and pitch it. We gave away $5,000 in prizes. And uh, we had about, I think we had 40 teams that ended up actually presenting, about 80 students, 90 students. And uh, again, from like 26 different majors, some of them working together. And uh, gave away a lot of prizes, get people excited about coming up with ideas. And then we're like, hey, well guess what's next? You have to figure out if it's a good idea, right? So we spent the rest of the semester talking about that in our idea space where we do uh, every Wednesday, we have a guest speaker to talk about something related to entrepreneurship and innovation and creativity. And um, then next semester, the first thing we do is the elevator pitch. And this is where they have to present their business model. Like, how are they gonna make money with this wonderful idea? And then through a lot of work over the last few years, we're actually now connecting that to the next event is the hackathon. So now they have an idea, they have a business model, Next, they produce the actual uh, MVP out of a weekend-based competition. Like another startup weekend. Here, right. So we're trying to string this all together so that students can actually develop a product while they're students and get it to a point where they actually have something going on. And, uh, and Is this part of your entrepreneurship program? Also? So we're trying to connect all the dots. So what we're trying to do is like the Da Vinci is ours, the elevator pitch is College of Business, the hackathon is engineering. But what we're trying to do is create the framework where it's like, it's not just engineering, right? It's not just college of business. Get students started together and work on the program. And then we'll eventually connect that to Startup Weekend, but maybe in some other capacity, don't know. But we want to get it to the next stage where we go off campus and into the community with it, right? Once they've built that idea, we got to go forward, so. I don't even know what's on this floor. I don't think I'm going to come up this side. You just take a look at the director here. Oh, this is the dean's floor. I have been up there. No way. The dean of the College of Science and Engineering. Oh.
which exhibition are we doing today? Uh, this is the faculty exhibition. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so we've got a description in the corner right here, and there's some postcards and everything. Can you welcome okay. to sign in? Oh, yes, please, by all means, if y'all would sign in and okay. put in your name. Sociology department. We do. I've not engaged with them yet, though. I'm trying to think of which department they're in. Hmm. They might be at a, a college of education. Or they might be at a psychology. Or they might actually be in engineering. Let me think about that. You're, are you from Pensacola? I've been here about four years. Where did you come in from? Melbourne, Florida. Just down by the Not Space Center. Cocoa Beach, about eight hours. So, all relative. It's not a good way to get here from Melbourne. Like, there's no direct flights. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, so the idea of this was, I believe, process. Right, so... A lot of these works are talking about the process of creating art. So things like this that may not look very finished are all part of the process. Right. I think that's a word you want to include in your entrepreneurship class because the biggest challenge which I believe people have is they don't understand that the process actually is all ugly. It doesn't look all fancy and everything. <laughs> and people are taught to be perfectionist and they're trying to be so perfect that, that a product never gets released. And people are waiting and ever and ever trying to make it perfect. And it just never happens. And most of them just drop out. That's, that's something which I had to unlearn in my life that I was taught to be perfect. Like everything has to be perfect and then I found out life is not supposed to be perfect. There is every single human being has some flaw. How is that? Is and that flaw is what makes them human. Exactly. And it makes you special. Isn't yeah. It? If we were all perfect, then there would be no need for entrepreneurship, no need for innovation. Yeah. This is a project it's, from it's a nice little projector. Yeah, it was a pretty cool projector. I saw that, I was like, instant, I want. So this project here is a professor named Thomas Asmuth, who's moved here from Silicon Valley, but um, he does a lot of like sensor-based and uh, science-based art projects. Hmm. So this one is looking at um, water samples collected from different parts of the, uh, like further and further away from some source of pollution pollutants and you can see the way the level of pollutant gets like really dark and then it gets lighter and lighter the further away you get uh, and that's a that's very cool. horrible explanation of what he did but it's, <laughs> he always is looking at water and turbidity so He's co-teaching a class with a business professor as well right now on creativity and innovation within the workplace or something like mm. that. And uh, I'm actually very jealous that I'm not in the class because <laughs> <laughs> he is an artist, but he's been, we met him through the entrepreneur program. He, he was a speaker trying to talk about how do you come up with ideas, how do you uh, brainstorm and go through this creative process. And then from that beginning, he is now 
working with the business department pretty closely to try to bring creativity into the business mindset and then on to the rest of the campus after that. But the challenge, creativity is a challenge, apparently. Where do you think creativity really comes out? I think it comes from a little bit of hard work. <laughs> you know, pressing on which part of the organ. And hard work for what? For like your hands or your mind or your nose or... So the Jim Gibson... Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much, Krista. The, the Jim Gibson methodology is all of the above, right? Mm. Yeah, that... He has this term that, as far as we know, he's kind of invented. So anyway, down there is um, more theater, hmm. staging, classrooms, and to the right is the uh, classrooms for the art, so like woodworking, 3D printers. Wow. Um, I mean, I'm happy to show you. Yeah, I'd love to see the printer that will overtake your day in here. My day is all open for you. Okay. Very good. A lot of kind Hanifas. What? Seriously? What's this? An appreciation of gift to the center of the environment. Raymond Dyson, Allah Rakam and Hanifa, nothing. What? That sounds like Pakistani names. Monsanto Corporation. Wow. And we're humble beginnings. Hmm. Wow. Well, I don't know if people like the Monsanto. But no, I wish we could cover <laughs> that up. <laughs> it is what it is. So these posters are just different exhibitions they've had here, different um, recognition. Like this one just closed right before this one opened. Hmm. It was very interesting. One of our professors here. Um, Who's the dean here? This is uh, William Crowley's domain, Dr. Dean Crowley. So uh, I'm not sure what's behind that door, to be honest with you, but I think that belongs to the tag. For the Do you have photography exhibitions? Uh, we have all sorts of exhibitions over any given time. So this is like wet work, right? Painting studio. That's the director of the art gallery. Oh, cool. Geographically very similar. So this is the dean's office? The dean's office is behind that door. I'll take you down there in a minute. But we'll circle around this way. This is art from our own students inside this building. So how much are you guys open for collaboration between other universities for who offer similar program? Um, to find you guys. So this is uh, our office. Oh. I don't have That's my keys. Right. Sorry, but you can see uh, the stained glass in the window. Uh -huh. That's this building. So, like, since he helped, you know, he broke, he has the shovel that broke the dirt and all that stuff. So, he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they gave him a gold shovel. So. Cool. Beautiful view, of course. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous campus. The only fear is that as they continue to grow, they keep cutting the trees. Stuff. And it's like, if we do that enough, we're just going to be another UCF. Department of Management and MIS. <laughs> this is the College of Business at UWF. Uh, this is the main lobby, and uh, it's gorgeous. It's like a so we have a few classrooms here, and then we also have all of the offices for the faculty administration, and then we have other buildings in the same complex for various specializations within the building. So 
my boss, Dr. Rinelli, who isn't going to be able to be here, unfortunately, uh, got stuck off campus. Um, is that him? Was the dean, no. Was the dean and got this building kind hmm. of architected and built. So he's very proud of it, of course. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Do you have your stock market? What's up? Yeah, the so ticker? This... Oh, the stock ticker? Yeah. They don't have a stock market, they have a stock ticker. <laughs> so all tree is... Oh, sorry, this is the bad section of the ticker. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> Cigarettes, chemicals, oh, big finance. I'm a terrible business person. <laughs> so am I, to be honest. <laughs> I just, I just want to do good. I don't want to do, uh... Just to make money. Yeah, exactly. Down here are gigantic classrooms. I guess I'll take it down here. You can just study areas over here. This is very creative. Been people passing through, correct? No, I, the way... I mean, it's a fence, and he has put it in here. It looks pure pretty. It's cheap. It uh, looks really nice at the same time. Well, that must be a finance class. Hmm. So each of these classrooms are, of course, super modern uh, conferencing software so that, you know, you can connect these classes to anyone in the world that has conferencing software like gigantic camera pointed out. So do you know who Steve Blank is from the Lean Business Model Canvas? Have you heard of the Lean Business Model Canvas? Wow, so you've done all these businesses with just uh, gumption. So the idea of the Lean Business Model Canvas is um, instead of these 100 page business plans that people used to like to write, or not like to write, but would write to get financing, it's now like these nine boxes. So it's like value proposition, customer channels, customer acquisition. Uh, key pl key resources and then your revenue model and uh, things like that and so I've added well sorry there's also the mission model canvas which is the nonprofit version of that so instead of like profit it's you know social good and then a friend of mine and I've been working on a social enterprise model canvas where in the center is the social good the triple bottom line metrics and stuff like that but uh, Anyway, so Steve Blank is this guy that started all this. He's very famous within the business world. And so we were able to do a, a, a live stream conference with him through this classroom. He was over in Stanford where he teaches. And uh, so we were just connected through these giant cameras that are right above the screens. And then these screens are huge. So it's a pretty good learning environment. Even though it's a big classroom, it's uh, pretty... Um, uh, you know, it feels tight, right? It feels intimate, even though it's a technically auditorium. Every floor has some kind of a collaboration area here. Cool. Ironically, I don't actually have my keys. Oh. <laughs> This is the College of Business. This is where Jim's office is. I'd be more interested in figuring out how to get this thing solely powered. Oh, it's so. a mixed use mm -hmm. space where during the day it's Oasis, which is a tutoring lab for How Marcus College of Science and Engineering. So this is a group of students being tutored. So this is not a silence zone, this is like... This is a working zone, group collaboration zone. And then um, on Wednesday nights, we move all those tables out, or actually we just rearrange them into a theater style and fill this up with seats and we talk provide free pizza and we bring in people like Quint Studer to talk and you next time you're in town. Okay. <laughs> this Wednesday, who's speaking? Um, actually, I don't think anyone. Oh. We originally had a speaker, but he's gonna go somewhere. The EntreCon that I told you about, oh, he yeah. decided he wanted to attend EntreCon. <laughs> So these are our smart board areas, and on the second floor, there's a huge room filled with these, but they're touch screen. Uh, are they touch screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're touch screen. You can write on them. 
pull up your computer stuff, do art, whatever you want to <laughs> do on there. Um, and it's public, so you can come, just come in and use it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You just check them out at the circulation desk over there. And you also have full range of technology to check out projectors, iPads, computers, uh, this cameras, is a braille printer. Video cool. Camera. There's all sorts of cool stuff in the library. Downstairs, there's the archives. So you can get into the old book section. Hmm. They have all of the current classes books behind the counter so that you can check them out so you don't have to pay for books if you can't afford them. Hmm. So they're really working hard to make it affordable to be here, make it convenient. Anything you need as a student, this place is really geared toward uh, working with the students to make them successful. Now, the admissions are based on the GRE. So if somebody's homeschooled, they can just give the test and get admission, or do you know anything about that? I have no idea. Oh, all right. <laughs> so I have no idea. That's a good answer. I don't even remember how I got here. <laughs> I think I had to do the graduate entry. So this guy, Argy, is our logo, is our mascot. Ar Argy, this is not our mascot, but uh, we're the Argonauts. And so this guy mysteriously changes with the season. So like at Halloween, he was a little bit more orange and a oh. little bit more jack-o'-lantern-esque. During Mardi Gras, he all of a sudden has beads and uh, boas, and I have a feeling he'll have a little Santa hat. <laughs> so. Mariam's checking out the Cokes and the Cherry Cokes. So this is a <laughs> gigantic art installation from here to the top of the building. Nice. This space had bookshelves in it, and then they took them out so that we could be up here for speaker series, and it worked great. But this now year he offered to downstairs, and that's a much better location, mm -hmm. so uh, um, nice. and a little bit larger. So the libraries are evolving. They really are, like in front of our eyes. I'll show you something else on the way out. We'll look over our left shoulder, but more smart boards. study carols all around all of the floors where students can check out a private and quiet area of the study. And you'll see signs around that say quiet area or talking area. the window mm -hmm. is a fit bike or whatever they call it like a stationary bike with a tray where you can sit there and read your books that you take off the shelf and, or put your laptop and study while you're getting your exercise on so cool. they're trying to get the word out about that you saw this you might see the sign on the way out for the fit desk jam let's do next it week. let's get it? the word out all right let's do it we go down yeah I'm married to a librarian that works here, and uh, my mother's a librarian. 
so I just I love the smell of books. <laughs> How about you turn around and I take a nice photo of you? Just give me a pose, like you're like the, there you go. Here's a supermodel, guys. All right. You're fun. You married the library in the library? Yes, I did. No. With your mother? Yes, when I met my wife, she was a real estate agent. And then we didn't see each other for a year because she found me my house, my mm. rental apartment. Mm. And I didn't see her for a year because she was just my rental. Mm. And then when I found her again a year later, I found out she was actually in library school. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> so we're going to go to the library for the UWF. Mmm, smell coffee. And yours, Starbucks. Yes, would you care for a coffee? Can I buy you a coffee? I, I would love to on the way back, yes. Okay, sure, sure. I don't think so. He's, his calendar is like super up today. So I'm in a Pensacola library and this is this room is called The Great Good Place and it's based out of a book. Tell me more about this because it's I interesting. I told you everything I know actually. What is that? I don't know. But it's just a place where people can come together, meet, talk and uh, collaborate, right? And it's on the second floor of the John C. Pace Library and uh, based on, I believe, a local author. The, came up with this concept so open spaces open spaces you got it I've uh, installed these workout okay. bikes it's up to you go ahead go ahead I'm gonna try it all right cool so these are fit bikes or fit desks <laughs> a beautiful view all right hop on all right so you can literally work on it Mm-hmm. Cool. You can go like this. On yeah, can you grab a or... book for your father? Perfect. So you have to read the periodical QK 1B875 V1. What is that? Alright. Oh my god. Oh, it's anatomy. <laughs> Very nice. You're a fast reader. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you're in Pensacola, you come over, try out this amazing uh, workout bike. I think I, I might come and do it myself a few times and get addicted to it. Very good.